All right, here we are in lesson number four, and this is called a mini project because you're actually going to be building your web page in three stages. This first part is the structure and some of your content. All right, before we dive into what your ideas are, let's just review a couple of things. Get your journals. If you don't have them yet, grab them, pause the video, have someone go get the tub and get them all out. If you turn to the page that has all of your tags and the running list, this is what you have for your building blocks to create the structure of your web page so far. So the first tag we learned about were paragraphs. It has an opening and a closing. When you surround text with paragraph tags, it creates a blank line above and a blank line below. So it separates it out. It could just be one short line of text. It can be a whole bunch of text. But what it does is it separates it out into a paragraph. Then we did the headings. All right. We talked that heading one was the biggest one, meaning it makes it a bigger font and it's bolded. This gradually goes down all the way through a level six, which is very tiny, tiny font or tiny type. It's still bolded. All right. And then in between, it's just a gradual decreasing of the size to go from very big to very small. All right. So you have all of those heading ones to bold things. Then at the end of lesson three, we saw these two special types of tags that only operate by themselves. They don't have a partner that's a closing tag. The BR is a line break. So unlike the paragraph, which gives a whole extra blank line and then it starts new. This just is like using an enter and it takes you to the next line. And the HR is a horizontal rule that puts that really fine line in to separate your content. If you want to use those, those are kind of nice in organizing what you have on your web page. The last thing we talked about were lists, all right? At the beginning of lesson four, some of you may have gotten to this on level two, where you're practicing creating an unordered list. That means it's bullet points. This is the code that we put in your notes last time. So it's the unordered list opening and close. And then in between, you have the list parts. In between these two is where you would put whatever you wanted in your list. Like I think we did Halloween candy in here before, like, you know, Twix and Kit Kats and M&Ms or whatever. If you want it numbered, the only thing that's different is you use an ordered list command, the O instead of the U, open and close. <clears throat> that will automatically number it. So do not type one period, two period, three period. Nope, nope. It all does it programmatically. You are going to take all of this information now and start applying it into what do you want to make for your web page. If you have not had a chance to go to lesson four and do level one, which had six parts and level two, you'll work on that first. But what I really want to spend some time in, in um, looking at is reminding you of some of those personal web pages you've seen already. Okay. Very simple, not a ton of fancy content just to see what's there. So you had the dog one. Remember that the trip was a great kind of a blog or an accounting of that um, hiking trip. The background was really busy, but we're not to that point yet. So just think about the content itself. Same thing with this musical instruments one. There are a lot of great information. This recycling one, remember this was where we saw them use those horizontal rules to separate different parts of their content. And then this one on haiku. So let's take a look real briefly at what some students have done last year, just to give you an idea of what kind of topic, if you're like, I don't know what to do, what are some possibilities, okay? What I am gonna ask you to incorporate is I want headings, I want two different sizes, all right? Paragraphs, I want to see three 
different pairs of paragraph tags to separate out some of your content, all right? And then build in some kind of list. That's So as you look at these examples, let's see what you notice, all right? Here was one about um, travel and places to go on vacation. So you'll notice I see at least two different sizes of headings. I think there are three here. I see a list and these are the paragraphs, these lines in that content. There's three of them. Good. Okay. It doesn't have to be structured with say seven sentences or whatever you are given as a guideline in language arts. For here, it's just some content separated with paragraph tags. All right, here's one about gymnastics. So as you just briefly look at it, you see a whole bunch of paragraphs, good. I see different sized headings. It's organized really well, that's good. I see a couple of lists, there you go. This one was about trucks. So there are three paragraphs right in a row. There's some headings, these are different sized, and then a couple of different lists in there, cool. It could be something as simple as, okay, here's Halloween. I see the headings. I see two lists. They only had one paragraph in here. So if I was giving feedback, I'd say, all right, get a couple more pieces of information in there so you can create a couple of different paragraphs. Here's a simple one about basketball. Notice each of these, there's four different paragraphs set up here. All right, there's one heading, so missing a second heading, at least of a different size, but they have a list. Here's another travel one that was uh, set up with, again, the different headings. Here's a list, a bunch of paragraphs, super. This one's about a puppy. Again, we're looking for lists, paragraphs, and different headings. Here's one about hobbies. I like this. They use those horizontal rules much like they did on that recycle page. All right, super. Um, this is kind of more of a public service announcement one about why you should not text and drive or being distracted. Um, another sports one where they have the paragraphs and then the list was there. So as you can see, there's a lot of topics that you can work with. Eventually, we'll take this and incorporate in pictures and some color and um, go from there. We'll talk about how do I get a hyperlink in there and program that. But it's all excellent, excellent ideas. So here's what I want you to do. There is a project guide that I'm going to ask to have handed out right now so you can pause the video to do this. If you are watching online at home and you don't have the paper copy, there is one in Schoology in digital form. Okay, so grab that and get it out. Put your name up at the top and what you're thinking is, I want to make a web page about something that I value, something that's important to me. So you can take some time to brainstorm some ideas. You're going to have a couple days to work on it because I think once you get your idea fleshed out, programming it will be a snap. All right. And that's why we want you to draw it out first. So as you look through this sheet, think what your goal is. All right. So I was thinking, well, I could do something. I like cooking. I like you know, things about um, my family. Maybe I want to do something about sports. I don't know. I think I'm going to settle in on musicals and musical theater. It's my favorite. That's what I want to do. <clears throat> you decide what you want and start going through this process of filling out the project guide. All right. I'm designing. How can my design of my page communicate my value? Well, I want to have some headings to lay out um, to kind of illustrate why it's important to me. I would like it to be informational and maybe teaching people a little bit. So I got to think about that and how I lay things out. I want to kind of have the why, the what, my favorites, and I want it easy to read. The content, well, I kind of put some of this here. So maybe um, I want to put like my favorites on here. 
I want to talk about local theater opportunities if people are interested. Uh, so let's see, I'm going to talk about my faves, um, local theater organizations like Black Dirt Theater. Uh, and I probably just want to give kind of some general information about it, about what musical theater is in case someone isn't um, certain of what it is. Here at the middle school, we usually do a musical each fall. So it's kind of fun for me to go and watch some of you perform. How do I want it organized so that it's clear what's most important? Ooh. Well, that's kind of in with my design part. I definitely want to organize it so that it's easy to read. I want to have headings and content um, clearly organized, um, easy to read. I put that up there as well. And I probably want the most important things. Here's where you could think, do you want that to be first? Like, where do you want it located? Do you want it to be bigger and bolder, the parts that you want um, that are most important? You're going to have to think about how you want to make that clear. And then continue on on the back side. There's a big area here for you to sketch out what you think you want it to look like. So you're going to start drawing it out and what you want to say. And I want you to specifically, though, get to this part about what tags are you going to need. I want to give you the requirements here to make sure you have it. Three paragraphs. So I'm going to be looking for that paragraph tag code. Uh, I want at least two headings in different sizes. Two headings, different size. And let's see, one list, at least one list. You decide if you want it a bulleted one or a numbered one. That's fine with me. Once you have all that, and you get that going, then you can start going ahead in code lesson number four. Let's get here. Boom, boom. After you get through these first two levels, then in level number three, it'll start you in on coding your page, all right? Notice it gives you this framework. Always put all of your code in between the two body tags. And the most important thing is make sure all of your content is surrounded with HTML. You don't want any content just floating out there without having something in front of it and at the end of it that is in HTML. Go from there and good luck and let's see what you come up with.